morning, Bethesda. Good morning, church. Good morning, guests. Good morning, family. Thank you for joining us another time. Usually I tell everybody to stand. We're just going to sing and worship God. But today I believe that this song, we all need it. I know I need it. And it just shows and again proves how much God has always been and is in control. So Father, I thank you for another day. I thank you for another time, another opportunity to worship, to give you honor, to give you glory, to recognize you for who you are. You are the great I am. You're the first and the last. You're the beginning and the end. You're our provider. You're a comforter. We can run to you anytime. And you'll always be there. Thank you for those big loving arms that envelop us, holds us, gives us peace. Thank you, Father. Watch over your people. Comfort your people. Heal your people. Touch your people. Let them feel you. Let them experience you. We give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we honor you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. What a mighty God we serve. What a wonderful Father we serve. I don't care what you're going through. But God will take care of you every time again. You may be down and feel like God has somehow forgotten that you are faced with circumstances you can't get through. But right now it seems that there is no way out. And you're going under. Church, but God's proven time and time again. He'll take care of you. And he'll do it again. Oh, he'll do it again. Yes, he will. If you just take a look at where you are now. Or hasn't he always come through for you? He's the same now as then. My God hasn't changed. You may not know how. You may not know when. But he'll do me again. God knows the things that you're going through. He knows you've been hurting. And he understands, understands that your heart has been broken in two. He's the God of the sun and the stars and the seas. He is your father. So if he can come more, then he'll find some way to fix this for you. And he'll do it. If you just take a look at where you are now and where you've been, for as a team always come through for you, he's the same now as that. God has a change. May not know now, may not know when, but he'll do it. He has a change. 
Praise and worship. We may not know how. We may not know when, but we are guaranteed the Lord will do it again. He is an on time God. And He has never failed us. We never leave us, nor will we ever forsake us. I'm asking you to turn your Bible with me to John chapter 15. Reading from verse 12. 17. John 
15 if you're from verse 12 to 17. And it reads, This is my commandment that you love one another as I love you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down for his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth, I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. Verse 16. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you, that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you, that you love one another. And what I want to share to you all is, we are commanded to love but we are also commanded to serve. We're commanded to love, but we're also commanded to serve. We see here in our text, Jesus addressing his disciples on his way to the Garden of Gethsemane, where he would later be arrested and then crucified. John chapter 15 starts with Jesus giving his disciple a parable, which is a heavenly story with an earthly meaning about a vine and some branches. Now in our text we read where Jesus had transitioned from a parable to a commandment. We, we will discover as we examine in our text today that Jesus not only gave his disciples a commandment, but he also commissioned them for service. What is this commandment? In verse 12, this is my commandment that you love one another. Watch this. How are we supposed to love one another? This commandment begs two questions. How has he loved us? And why is it important that we love one another? The answer to our first question can be found in verse 13 to 15. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends. If you do whatsoever I command you, henceforth I call you not servant, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I call you friends. This just simply means that if you love me, you will, you will be willing to put it all on the line. If you love me, you will be willing to go wherever, do whatever, and speak to whomever I command you to. Verse 14, you are my friends. If you do whatever I command you, and what is the command in verse 12? That we love one another. As a songwriter, so Edward said, what a friend we have in Jesus. In fact, the Bible is filled with stories about friendship. Abraham was a friend of God. David and Jonathan. Elijah and Elisha. Paul and Timothy. Jesus and Elijah. Well, you may ask, then what are you trying to say? You still have no quite answer to my question. I need to know how am I supposed to love someone when I have a hatred towards them? When I feel such a way towards them? 1 John 3, verse 16 to 17 reads, Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. If anyone has material possession and sees a brother or a sister in need, but, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? You may say, I give you that, Pastor, but what about the second question? What is important that we must love one another? John 13, verse 34 to 35 tells us, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I love you, that you also love one another. Why? In verse 35, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one to another. Jesus is telling us that his commandment to us are the same as to his father's commandment to him. In verse 10, we go to verse 10. If you keep my commandment, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my father's commandment and abide in his love. The Bible is telling you and I here that we are to love one another in the extent that he has loved us. You see, he loved us enough 
to die and we are called to love him enough to live for him and to love our brethren. So now that we understand our commandment to love, it is important for us to understand what love is. And it's also important to know and understand that love, first thing, love is an action word. You don't believe me, men, ask a wife, love is an action word. A wife, don't believe me, ask a husband, love is an action word. Jesus even said that actions speak louder than words. Oh, yes, he did. Because in John 40, verse 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. And what is his commandment? Verse 12, we love one another. In fact, Jesus was once asked, what was the greatest commandment? And Jesus said in Matthew 22, verse 37 to 40, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is a first and great commandment. And the second is unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. This just simply means loving one another is not an option. It is a commandment. In fact, it is not just any commandment, but the scripture tells us in Matthew 22 verse 39 that it is the second greatest commandment. So we are commanded to love. With that commandment comes a commission to serve. You can't say you love God, but you're not willing to serve him. Serve. Ah, verse 16, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. It simply means that we had nothing to do with the selection process. We did not choose Jesus. He has chosen us. In fact, 1 John 4, 19 says, we love him because he first loves us. Verse 16, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you. Why? Watch the commission. That you shall go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit shall remain, that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. We are commissioned to serve. Choosing and ordained to go and bring forth fruit, choosing and ordained to produce eternal works, not only that, throws in the bonus and said, the bonus and said, that while we are at it, that we can also get some prior's answer. In fact, I think, I believe, and I know in my heart, God has been dealing with me in a special way. And really sometimes it's not easy to love someone when they speak some evil stuff against you. <laughs> and I've been tested earlier this week. How can you, you really love someone when they say some hurtful things? But sometimes God tests us as well. Do you love me? Will you keep my commandments? If you love me, you ought to be willing to close somebody. You ought to be willing to disciple somebody. You ought to be willing to feed somebody. You ought to be willing to forgive. To forgive somebody. You ought to be willing to give a word of encouragement to somebody. You ought to be willing to help somebody. You ought to be willing to lead somebody to Christ. You ought to be willing to pray for somebody. You ought to be willing to tell somebody about the resurrected Savior, Jesus Christ. So my question to you is, in the word of peace, sweat, how deep is your love? Yeah. Do you love him enough to tell somebody about his goodness and his mercy? Do you love him enough to bring someone to the house of the Lord? Do you love him enough to love someone? But thank that church of God. We are commanded to love and to commission to serve. But one thing I need for you to understand that the two C's, the command and the commission, are not independent of themselves. They work hand in hand. In other words, you cannot say you love God and hate your brother. In fact, John helps us to understand this point in 1 John 4, 20 to 21. If a man say, I love God, I hate his brother, he is a liar. And verse 21, and this commandment have we from him that he who loved God loved his brother also. In other words, we cannot say that we love God and stand by and, and ignore the commandment and the commission that our Heavenly Father has laid out for us. We cannot say that we love God and watch our mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, sons and daughters, neighbors, co-workers live and die and go to hell because we refuse to love them enough to tell them about our resurrecting Savior. James 4 verse 17, Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. So what I'm trying to say, 
that when we know that God has commanded us to love and commissioned us to serve, we decided to ignore the command and the commission. And simply put, we have committed sin. It doesn't matter how old we are, how young you are, how experienced we are. If we ignore the command to love and commission to serve, we have sinned. So my question still remains, how deep is your love? Do you love him enough to serve him? So, do you love him enough to get busy? Do you love him enough to get involved in the Sunday school ministry, the men's ministry, the women's ministry, the music, the media, the youth? Do you love him enough to pack out tracks and flyers, telling people that Jesus lives and promote the great work that God is doing here at Bethesda? How deep is your love? In fact, if you love him, not only will you give love, but you will also allow yourself to be loved. Hmm. Jennifer Hudson puts it like this. You gotta love me. You gotta love me this way. In spite of how I may feel about you. In spite of how you've been treated me. Uh, in spite of what people may say, I'm gonna love you. I'm gonna love you. But tell you how deep is the love. If you love him, you have to be willing to serve and tell somebody. That the love of Jesus, of Jesus Christ is stronger than any pain that you may feel and experience. The love of Jesus is stronger than any failure that you have committed. That love of Jesus is stronger than any problem that may have been going on in your life. The love of Jesus is stronger than any fault that they may have about you. If you love him, then we ought to be willing to understand that we are chosen by God to do his work. To understand that we are ordained by God for the work. And to understand that we are supposed to be laborers who brings in fruit. To love all mankind. All human race. So my question still remains, how deep is your love? Are you willing to go to the extra mile? Despite what people may say about you, how they point their fingers and sometimes I tell myself, sometimes it's just a test. God said, how bad do you love me? And he told his word that he would never leave us nor forsake us. But how bad are you going to go the extra mile? And one thing I want to share with you before I close. I've realized that God can use anybody to do his work. So whenever you feel inadequate, just remember that you are in good company and in the right place to be used by God. You see, Noah got drunk, but that still did not allow, that still didn't stop God of using him. Abraham was too old. Joseph was abused. Moses stuttered. That still didn't stop God from using them. Gideon was afraid. Jeremiah and Timothy were too young. That still didn't stop God from using them. Jonah ran from God. Job went bankrupt. Peter denied Christ. The disciples fell asleep while praying. Martha worried about everything. Zacchaeus was too small. That still didn't stop God from using them. So I stopped by to tell somebody, right, no task too small when it comes to doing the work of God. In fact, throughout the Bible, it is constantly the small thing that I had that, that, that gave God, that got God his attention. Moses used a rod to defeat the Egypt. David used a slingshot. A few loaves of bread fed over 5,000 people. So Bethesda, are you commanded to love? And are you also commanded to serve? I'll be honest with you, when my wife and I was approached of coming here as intern, I had moments. I told myself, can I really do it? You know, um, I don't really have experience in passing a church. But I had to call on the bottom of my life. And I've learned you've got to surround yourself with people who will push you. And something to push is so uncomfortable. We ask for mentors, but when mentors come, they push, it hurts sometimes. I want to look back, it's three years later, I said, God, I thank you for your mercy. I have lost some people along the way, but God, you still stood right by me. To see how the church is striving and growing, God, I thank you. It hasn't been easy to serve. It hasn't been easy to love. But I had to push through. And sometimes, 
we're forced to walk alone. In this Christian journey, sometimes God will put you in a place that it's only you and him and no one else. The question still remains, are you going to still serve him even when everything looks bad around you? Even when you feel chaos is happening around you? You're still in the midst. He's still keeping you. He's still protecting you. When I think of what we're all going through in this world, I thank God every day that I have lived to see another day. He has kept me. He has protected me. He has protected you. Why? Because he has an assignment for you. Our assignment is to spread the gospel of Jesus. Our assignment is to show love, not to say you love someone, but to show the love of God. My wife, on well, Mother's Day before we left to our hand of flowers, flowers to the mother of Bethesda, she took upon herself to hand some flowers to the mothers in our neighborhood. It's one thing to say you love someone, but you're showing the love. And some people we don't really talk to. It's just high, just bypassing. And some people you wave to them and wave back at you. Yet she took upon herself to let someone know how important they are. That's what God has called us to do. To do stuff that may break us, to break us out of our comfort zone. Are we willing to be obedient to the voice? See, we want to be blessed, but we don't want to be obedient sometimes when the Holy Spirit talks to us. But my encouragement to all of us, including myself, I'm in this mix as well. Let us ask God for boldness, for courage, for guidance as we demonstrate the love of God. Sometimes it's not what we say, it's what we do. As we said, action speak loud and word. We don't have to say much, but our presence must speak with volume. I will say this and I will close, but just um, about a week and a half ago, I was at work. I don't know how this one coworker found out that I was a pastor. He said, Dougway. I heard that you're pastor in church, is that true? I said, yes. I, said, I know you're a Christian, but I didn't know that you were pastor in church. He said, how come you didn't tell me? He said, well, that's not how I, that, that's not my thing. I don't tell people I pastor in church. And we were talking for a while, we were talking for a while, and our unit rep on A113 pulled up, and we were talking. I didn't know that my unit rep goes to a particular church that I know of. Didn't even know. And when he overheard a conversation, he said, yeah, right. You part of the church? I said, yeah. Man, you guys sent me your church service. You have online service? I'm like, yeah. You guys sent it to me. And I sent it to him. And he responded to me. He said, man, I've been blessed. I'm going to send it to someone else. It's not what we say, what we do. My wife told me how she decided to share this church service, a co-worker of hers. And the lady responded and said, this service blessed her so much. It was she got some confirmation in the service. I'm telling you, saints, when we just let our light shine before men for them to see our good works, God will honor us. So I remind you, I'm just reminding you and encouraging as a church family, let us continue to show the love, especially what's happening in the world today. One song we sing in church, you're my brother, you're my sister, so take me by the hand. Together we will work. There's a fortress that can defeat us. Once we're walking side by side, and as long as there is love, we will stand. That's it. As long as there is love, Bethesda, I promise you, we will stand. All eyes closed and bowed. Father God, thank you for today. I thank you for your wonderful grace and your mercy. God, I, I always come to you and say, I thank you for your protection, because you have protected us once again. Sometimes we don't deserve it, but it's because of your grace and your mercy why you kept us. For those who are watching this, this service, those who are listening, God, I, I pray you will bless them in a special way. You know what they're going through. Touch them in a powerful way. Remind us as believers, as Christians, that we need to show love to one another. And to serve, even if it's small, we know little is much when you're in it. You just want to see our obedience. So have that own way. We pray. Amen. I will admit, Sister Rosie, Rosemary Clark, remind us something. Our title, our first, I want to say thank you, everyone who's been supporting in this ministry. We appreciate it. We cannot do it without you. So we have our online giving. The link will be shared in our group. 
And I'm asking us to be, continue to be faithful. God has been grateful to us. The more we give, the more God will bless us in return. And not just the giving, not just the material thing. He's looking for our obedience. And I always tell you, even when you don't have enough to give, believe in your heart. So as you give, God might have you will bless the tithes, the offering in a special way. I thank you for everyone that has been given thus far and those who start to give. I am asking you to continue to bless this mission, bless this offering in a powerful, powerful way. And all God people say, Amen. And family, one thing I want to share with you before I close up the benediction. I share with you a family I buried the baby a few weeks ago, the Williams family. And Sister Anissa, uh, who I'm just starting just to build a relationship with her, who have been so in a seed to this ministry, haven't been to the church yet. And she said, when the doors are open, she and her family is coming. I just buried her granddaughter. But I got word of her mother passed away. Now I have to bury her this Saturday coming. I asked the family, I asked the church family to pray for the Williams family. Anissa Williams and her entire family. This lady hasn't been to this church yet, but yet she still believes in this church. And she is going to, she just lost her granddaughter. And now she lost her mother. Anissa Williams is her name. Let's remember that family in front. One hurts, we all hurt. And one rejoice, we all rejoice. And this family needs their church, their church family to pray for them. All right? Until then, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and grant you his peace now and forevermore. And all God people say, Amen. I love you. God bless you.